last two days I've been seeing your videos and I've been inspired by you. I've been inspired by all your teammates. This is the next personality that I'm going to call on stage. She's here. She's Katrina Kaif. You're going to get a lot of pictures and videos in the end. And Katrina, I would really thank you from the bottom of our heart for being here. When an empowered woman like you, you are here supporting this vision, we're definitely going in the right direction. Give them both a huge round of applause. Katrina, I request you to please come forward and share with us your wonderful vision. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming today um, and to listen to the Educate Girls story. And thank you, Katrina, for being here and being a supporter. Uh, very quickly, Educate Girls is, a, is an NGO that is 10 years old. And I'll just run you through very quickly what we do uh, in the form of a story. This is Jyotsna. Uh, she is eight years old. No, no, sorry. Sorry, can I just request you? You'll get time afterwards for the photos. Eight seconds, eight seconds. Hold on, eight seconds, please. Go. Let this letter talk is a really important presentation. I promise you, you'll get lots of time for pictures with me and Safina and me and all the various permutations and combinations. Just <laughs> it'll take about 10 minutes, right? Less than that. Less than that. Thank you. Okay. So again, Jyotsna is eight years old from Pali district in Rajasthan. And uh, Jyotsna, aap jante hai gaon mein kaise hota hai? She's one of the first people to get up. Um, you know, she cooks, she cleans, she looks after. This is Jyotsna's family. Um, Jyotsna doesn't go to school, and her mother also never went to school. There's no history of literacy in my field. As you can see, she looks after the goats. Uh, she goes to fetch water. Mm. She does all the household work. She looks after her brothers. And she's one of the last people to go to bed every day. And in many parts of our country, still the prevailing mindset is that a goat, like in this photograph, is an asset, and a girl is a liability. We understand the So that is where really um, it's like for girls like Jyotsna. And she's not alone. We have large number of girls that are out of school currently in some of the areas. Some of the main areas that are keeping girls from school are household work, sibling care, um, early child marriage. Um, a lot of girls, um, by the time they turn 12 and they get their period, they're actually married off, saying that, you know, this is it, she's now a grown woman. And we have one of the highest number of child marriages in the world. So these are all the impediments, the reasons that Jyotsna can't go to school. Once she was... Um, so Deepika, first and foremost, what she did was that she went door to door in her entire village and she found girl, uh, She found that Jyotsna wasn't going to school. Um, she tried to convince the parents. They didn't agree, so she called a village meeting. And here the headmaster, the sarpanch, the ward punch, everybody comes to this kind of meeting uh, where we talk about the importance of girls' education. Um, and then finally, it can sometimes take three weeks. It can sometimes take three months. It can sometimes take much longer. But in this case, Deepika was able to get Jyotsna's parent to agree to enroll her in school. So she comes and she helps with everything. She helps with the forms and she makes sure that you know nothing gets dropped off in the process. It's not just that she, they said, yes, yes, we'll send her. She makes sure that it actually happens for Deepika. And she knows that getting Deepika into school is only the first step. Enrollment really to make sure that Jyotsna is actually learning. So she comes into the classroom and we have our own teaching learning material. 
and to make sure that she's actually learning how to read and write at the age of two, six, even six. She also works with school management committees to make sure there's a toilet, a functioning toilet in the school, and all the basic infrastructure for work. Next one, please. And Deepika is not alone. Today, we have 11,000 Teen Balika volunteers on the ground. 60% of them are young men, and 40% of them are young women. So this is an army of people at a village level who are working in their own communities to find girls who are out of school and convince their parents and the elders and everybody around to make sure that girls are, are coming back into school. And given the efforts of 11,000 Teen Balika volunteers, they have convinced parents of over 200,000 girls to bring them back into school. Uh, so because of that, because of raising that awareness, we are seeing uh, very, very strong results at the ground. Currently, we are in 12,000 villages, working with over 20,000 schools in two states, in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, and covering around 15 districts. And really, why do we do all of this? We do this because when Jyotsna goes to school, something magical happens. Every year that we keep Jyotsna in school is a year that we delay her marriage. The later she marries, the later she will have children, which means that her children will be healthier, she will be much less likely to die in childbirth, she will be 40% more likely to immunize her own children, uh, less likely to suffer domestic abuse and violence, much, much less likely to be trafficked. You pick any indicator and it will change for Jyotsna. And so really we're so grateful that you are joining us as a champion for girls' education and for really lending a hand and doing your bit for this level of nation building. Because an equitable society, as we know, is, is good for our people. Thank you, Ismay. Incredible pleasure to be here and to be joining the team today. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have a chat right now. And uh, a lot of questions will be answered. Could I have the chair? Yeah, yeah, sure. you're working with is the mindset of youth and it's a patriarchal society and mindset is something that you can't work in one day it takes so much of time how did you manage that i think we're still managing it i think we're still uh, like you said it isn't an overnight task um, but you know really if india wakes up tomorrow and believes that our sons and daughters are equal we wouldn't need an education so it really is a mindset issue and a mindset problem. Yeah, and what do you do for that, for that mindset issue? I mean, you know, you, you, you know, you go and and teach the camp to girls. I mean, it's not easy when you have that going and when you take people on your coattails. I mean, what kept you to like this job? What was, what kept you going? I think what keeps us going is Jyotsna, right? She needs us. It's really about her. It's not about what they're saying to us. It's immaterial what they say to us. Uh, but at the end of the day, we know that if Jyotsna goes to school and she is 500% more likely to educate her children, yeah. I only have to get her into school. Absolutely. Everything else, she will change it for her own children. So yeah. how can you not? I mean, that's just such a motivator. It's the bigger vision, the mission that you have, right? And Katrina, uh, your mother has been, she has had a great impact on you. And uh, I believe that she's also been a part of a lot of social causes, right? So what has the influence been on you? How has she impacted you in your life? Well, I think I have the most wonderful example of when it comes to, you know, taking up social causes in the correct way with my mother. My mother from the last, um, well, as long as I can remember, has always been involved in charitable causes, different charitable causes. But as of the last few years, um, she has been working, which you know I've uh, spoken about a bit on my social platforms. She's been working um, with this amazing school, which she's built from the ground up, called Mount View School, and this is in Madurai. 
And the thing that's so wonderful about the school is the teachers, everyone involved in it is actually from the local community, trained by her because she is a teacher. And I guess that's where, for me, the personal connect with this charity yes. really happened, with Educate Girls. So um, when Safina contacted me about Educate Girls, we do get a lot of people contacting us, to be very honest, because any cause, any, any charitable organization, yes. they need that voice for the exact reason which Safina just said, which is that you do get a lot of doors slammed in your face. When you're trying to change the mindset, right. see, there are, it's not just about the tangible resources. It's not just about the, the physical resources. It's about changing the mindset of the people who don't see the importance of sending their girls to school, who don't have the, the mindset that boys and girls are equal. And that's still, although we may hear in the metros and especially now it's become, you know, we hear a lot of talk about it, about equality in, in, our, in, in our world. That's not necessarily what life is, out, is like in what we would call rural India, in the interiors of India. Um, it's, it's that maybe just because we're seen and talking about it amongst ourselves, it's a great place to start. But what Safina is actually doing is on the grassroots level, from right. the ground up, she's going into the communities with her team, with Team Balika, not going in saying, this is what I think, yeah. so this is the right way, Absolutely. and trying to enforce her or our opinion, where I'm sure everyone in this room is of the opinion that you know, girls must be educated, that every child must have an education. But she's trying to first go and talk to them in a way that they will understand not be told what to do, whether it's the village leaders, the village elders, the parents, getting people who often are the most educated girls or the most educated boys from the local communities to join Team Balika, who then go into that community. So whether, whether it's not an unknown like Safina, right. um, it's someone from the community saying, Auntie, you know, can, we, can we talk to you for a minute? Or someone who's recognizable to them and saying these are the reasons and these are the benefits that you must send your daughter to school. Although it sounds on many levels like this is, you know, starting again from the basics, this is still, this is still what is happening and this is still what we, in my opinion, is the number one, the number one thing to address and that is, for me, everything starts with education. Knowledge is power and when you have that power, you have self-confidence, you have belief in yourself, you then can become empowered to start even thinking about what you yeah. want. Today, um, today uh, the, the girl which um, Safina is talking about, today she wants to be a teacher, but she knows she wants to be a teacher because she has that education. Without education, she might not even know what she wants. She might not even have that self-awareness to start thinking about what she wants. In fact, I would like to acknowledge Team Balika that they work with so much of passion, with no intention of making money, and I'm absolutely floored by that. I'm absolutely floored by, you know, the vision they have to spread education in rural India among these girls. So the intention is so very pure. And uh, that brings me to this question, what, in the last 10 years, the experience that you've had, what is, what, which episode, according to you, is very, very special to your heart and has influenced you and inspired you? Oh, there's so many. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, um, I think Team Balikas are really, as you said, the, the yeah. heart of this model. And what's been really inspirational is to see how many, like when we expanded from Rajasthan to Madhya Pradesh. Yes. We've been in Rajasthan for a long time, and then we were just entering the state, and we said, but nobody knows us here. Will people stand up to volunteer? You know, and we started in Jabua district in Madhya Pradesh. All of you, I'm sure, are aware. It's a very tough geography. It's very, uh, you know, tribal. It's remote. It's yeah. a very difficult area to work in. And you won't believe it. We started doing our recruitment events. Uh, you know, going and, and canvassing people. And within four months, we had close to 900 young people who had stood up as Team Balika. Wow. In a state which was completely brand new. And you have guys also? Yes, and 60% of them are, are young boys and 40% young girls. Amazing. And first we used to think maybe it should be only girls and only women. But then we realized that when a young boy who is 12th pass, you know, 18, 19 year old boy, stands up in his village and says, you know, no, every girl in my village should go to school, it's such a powerful statement. And really, the, the battle for equity isn't just, you know, it's the he for she. It's men and women together we have to work towards um, that equity. Right, so. right. Makes sense. And Katrina, tell me this. 
how do you plan to amplify this message, to take this message forward of educating girls? So, you know, honestly, when I think anyone takes up a cause like this, what I really honestly believe to be my, um, or what I try to do, or yeah. what I yes. believe that is my responsibility to do is to gather, ga garner and to gather the awareness. Right. So for example, someone like Safina, who probably to most of you in this room, although we probably are quite known to each other, I probably recognize almost all of you in this room, you probably don't know who Safina is. This is her child, this is her baby, this is something she's worked passionately right. on since 2005. And Sometimes, although maybe even she m would prefer someone who's working with her 24 you know, hours a day, seven days a week, sometimes you need that voice to get the awareness. You need that voice to get the spotlight onto the cause. Right. Now, what my responsibility to do is to make sure that I give that voice to a cause which I believe in, to the best of my ability, is delivering what they're promising to do and is really trying to make a difference and who has their heart in the right place and is delivering what they, said they say they can do. And the reason, again, why I think for me, Sefina and Educate Girls are doing that is because of the way they're addressing and targeting the issue. We all know that education is important. We all know that, you know, boys and girls and the girl child, the boy child must be seen and treated as equal in every household. We all know that. But what they are doing is they're addressing it in a very tangible way. They're starting by changing the mindsets of the village, one village at a time one community at a time. It may not be um, in the numbers of hundreds of millions, but I know that's what her target is. I know she wants to grow Team Bal um, Balika, and she wants that number of 11,001 of today. She wants that number to become 300,000 right. in a year or two. She wants that every community has this group of, vo uh, has this group of, of youth uh, that have a voice, who are speaking to the elders, who are speaking to the leaders in that village saying that we must send every child to school, we must send every female child to school. And to have that, if she believes and if I believe that, you know, me being part of Team Balika is also a bit of an encouragement to them, right. to the team itself in some way, and is also saying that, you know, this is important. It's re underlining for them the fact that this is important and their efforts are not going unnoticed. Their efforts are being acknowledged. It is uh, the work they're trying to do is making a difference. And that's in my own small way, if I can achieve that, then, then I'm very happy. Tell me this, uh, Katrina, that what is the impact of education to girls in rural India? What, what's that impact going to be? Well, the first thing that it comes with is, what I, according to me, which I said, that knowledge is power. The first thing that comes is them being able to develop inner confidence, knowing who they are, knowing their own value. As Safina said in the statistics, that they will be less likely to face um, domestic abuse or abuse of any kind. They will be less likely to enter into child marriages. I mean, these two reasons are, you don't even need to, anything else to be said after that. Without that, they are never going to know their value. I mean, there's some pictures which Chef Safina showed me in, in their in material, which they were um, discussing. And then immediately I noticed in the picture that the, the father is sitting on the chair and the mother is still sitting on the floor. That's, that's still the way it is. And the, the, the child in the picture who they were referring to, who's a girl, is sitting on the floor even further. That, that in itself to me said everything. That's, there's so much to be said. Sometimes I say a picture speaks a thousand words. And if what we can do, and if, what, if you ask what is the importance, for me, education, and for any girl, and for any person, education and knowledge is power. It's the first step into knowing yourself and to knowing your potential. You know, so this brings me to this question, Safina, that what are your future plans? Where is, what is your vision forward? You know, where is this going to go? I was reading up your planning after eight, you know, till eight. What, what, what can we expect from Educate Girls? Um, so currently we work with uh, class one to eight. And now girls like Jyotsna are actually getting to the eighth. And so now we're laying our plans to saying how do we help them get in and complete secondary school and complete their 10th grade. Because completing the 10th is the certificate that's going to be so valuable to her. Nowadays, even if you want to stand for the Panchayat elections, you need a 10th certificate. You want a, like a, a, you know, some of the basic jobs, that's the minimum qualification. So we want to make sure that our girls are getting and we are supporting them so that they can actually complete the 10th grade and they make it. Um, 
and then also providing them safe spaces as they get older and get into adolescence, you know, um, things get much more complex. Um, walking to school can become difficult because, you know, koi raaste mein chhed deta hai and stuff. So making sure that they are safe, that they have safe spaces, uh, not just that they, you know, working on their own confidence, as Katrina said, because that's really important, but also working on an enabling environment in the village. So we're looking at creating councils at the village level right. that can support adolescent girls. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much more pressure on them to get married, and there's so much more pressure on them from society that really creating a support structure uh, so that Jyotsna doesn't have to end at eighth grade, that she can go well beyond. Thank you so much. And uh, Katrina, tell me this. We all look up to you. You know, men, women, everyone, you're an inspiration. What are your three mantras, you know, all the women out there, all the girls out there who look up to you, what are your three mantras to be successful? Well, I mean that you could, there's so many ways of seeing it, but to keep it short and simple, I would say um, belief, confidence, and perseverance. Belief, confidence, confidence and perseverance. Okay, and uh, Sufina, your last thought. Um, my last thought is we, you know, I'm, Really, really, really happy that Katrina's on, Katrina is on board because I know that the 11,000 Team Balika volunteers on the ground today are going to feel so energized. Absolutely. And I know that this will motivate many, many more young people to join the cause um, so that we could really make sure that every single girl is going to school. Thank you so much, Katrina. Thank you so much, Katrina. I'd just like to say, ladies and gentlemen, that we women are nurturers, we are nation builders, and it's so important to educate nation builders because they are going to transform the nation and indirectly we all are going to transform the world. So educate women and transform the world. And on that note, uh, we'll open the house for questions only pertaining to this event. So make sure that you ask questions in regards to this event. So could we have the mic passed around? We'll take three questions. Yeah, yeah? three questions. Katrina, you have to join the initiative of child education. Can you speak a little bit about the mic? Ma'am, when did you think that you should join the initiative? What's make you to join as the initiative? Well, primarily for the reasons which, which I uh, just said um, throughout this um, conference, which we've done, is after seeing exactly what Educate Girls were doing and what their initiative was and the way they're targeting, or the way they're targeting the issue of education from the ground level, going into the communities, building a team which are going to speak on their behalf in the communities, I really just felt it connected to me personally that this is an amazing way and an amazing vision. The way that they have partnered with the government, the way that they already have their, their structure, the infrastructure in place to be able to you know, follow up on that, uh, on that message. It just seems that this is something which is already on the right path and is a movement that I wanted to join, a momentum that I wanted to join. And as Safina said, if, if this encourages more volunteers to join Team Balika, then I mean, that's more than I can I think I could, I could really hope to achieve just in that inspiration alone. Hi, Katrina towards the center. Hi, this is Priyanka from Indian Express. Uh, Katrina, you know, uh, most of the times uh, actors, especially female actors, are considered unopinionated when they're asked about, on a, on a major public platform, about things, about issues. It's considered that they don't have knowledge or they're less intelligent. Have you ever been subjected to that prejudice or what's your opinion on, on this whole perception around actors, especially female actors? I'm not completely. Um, I'm not completely understanding what you're saying. If you're referring to, uh, at sometimes I personally have seen when it when it uh, enters into political matters or matters of of government things like that. I think a lot of actors, because they are not in politics, they don't feel the need to comment, and they genuinely don't want to comment. There's a big difference between having an opinion in your home, between speaking about it on a public platform, or between having an opinion for a social cause like this, like Educate Girls. To me, there's a big difference. I won't speak on behalf of anyone else because there's so many different situations and every person is different, so I won't speak for anyone else. But for me personally, there are a lot of times that I don't feel the need to comment on a topic. Doesn't mean I don't have an opinion on it, just means that perhaps it's not the right time or place. When there are certain causes, see this, this to me is not politics, Educate Girls is not politics, this is, uh, this is 
a social cause. This is a humanitarian cause. This is a cause that I believe in. I have an opinion on the topic, thus I've joined hands with Safina, who I think has the knowledge, has the power, has the potential, and she has the power, I, I, I mean by that, because she has the knowledge. She's done her background work on it. She's been working on it since 2005. Um, I've looked at their work in extensively. I believe in what she's doing. And thus, I've joined hands with her to try and shed light on this topic, which for me, honestly, very frankly, is not a lot of hard work. I just, ha I just come every now and then. Perhaps we want to do some field visits, do a few, few things. But the main work, the hard work, is being done by Safina, by Educate Girls, by their team, by Team Balika. So for me, honestly, it's just, it's actually, it's actually, I think, just a privilege in a way to be able to just lend my support to them. And if that helps them in some way, then that's outstanding. Anyone else? Hi, ma'am. Uh, according to you, I would like to know, besides education, what is uh, the other initiatives, what are the other initiatives that need to be taken in order to empower women and girls, not only in India, but all around the world? According to you, what's your opinion? Well, there's so many, that's a never-ending topic on that, right? Right now, I think for me, the most important step which I want to speak about is education because I think that's relevant to us here. I think there are a lot of steps being done all over the world that we're seeing, whether it's equality in the workplace, whether it's um, the attitude we have towards each other, whether it's our attitude uh, even as women that we have towards each other, um, being careful to lift up each other. And, you know, sometimes I have honestly noticed that recently, and I have myself become more aware of this in recent times, that subconsciously even perhaps, because it's been around for so long, do we really support our, our contemporaries, whatever industry you're in? Do, we, do I really support the women as much as I can that, who are around me or who are, who are in my wor work area or my workspace? And some, sometimes that competitive mindset can actually stop you from doing that. And I myself have become more aware of that and try to make sure, am I lifting up the women around me? Am I doing what I can to support them? Am I doing what I can to encourage them or to help them grow? Rather than just seeing what they can do for me, am I doing what I, what I can to encourage them to become better in their profession, whatever it may be? So for me, that's a very important one as well. A lot of things start with the mindset. And if we all can address our mindset and make sure what are we doing for the women around us, whether you're a man or a woman, what are we doing to help the women around us and lift up the women around us? I think that's a great place to start. You had a question? Yeah, I have a question. Could you please stand up? Yeah, I have a question for Katrina, ma'am, sure. and Safina, ma'am. Sure. The first question for Katrina, ma'am, is we see a very tangible relation between the Bollywood and the people, the Indian masses. So would you okay. want to do a film related to this matter, education, or would you pursue any director to take up this topic and make a film about it so that the Indian masses, their mindset that we're talking about changes more rapidly? Because we see there's a tangible relation between the movies and the people, especially the people in the rural area. And the question that I have for ma'am is we are talking about the team Balikas and Balaks who work without any incentive. How do y'all keep them motivated or, and what is their geography that they cover? Only the village or do they go out? These are the two questions I have. You, can, you don't need, I don't believe you need to have a movie to, um, to, take, this, uh, to take this cause further or to, or to spread the awareness of this cause. There are many ways we can do it, although a movie on it and sometimes a message which comes non-judgmentally or non-forcefully non and it comes, you know, organically in, in via an entertaining form as in a movie is an amazing way to get to get the message across and if someone makes a movie like that that's absolutely outstanding although I think um, sometimes without underlining exactly what you're trying to say I don't know if you've seen Secret Superstar so Secret Superstar had to me that message that was definitely the message that got across a young talented girl who is being stopped from fulfilling her dreams because it, society and and you know um, the the world around her is the si the society around her is not allowing her to do that so for me that there are movies being made like that it doesn't necessarily need to be a movie just about the classroom um, but this messaging coming into our movies I do think is a great way to take the me the the message further into society as you said we all love movies and that's a great way to get people to kind of um, get their attention on the topic 
Let, let's let Safina just um, address that one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I think it's a really good question as to say why is it that Team Balikas are doing this, uh, you know, in today's world to be working for free somewhere. Um, but, you know, the Team Balikas, A, they work only in their own village. So they're much more connected with the community because this is their village, right? And a lot of them feel that they get so much respect um, from, you know, people will say, Are ye to kuch karta tha, ghar tha. but now, you know, he's like, the, t the kids also call me teacher. Um, the kids, everybody gives you respect, right? Because you have put yourself out for other people. Team Balikas ka ek nara hai, mera gaon, meri samasya, mehi samadhan. So they really follow that, saying it's my village, it's my problem, and I am the solution. Um, so that is what. And really, they're very, very mission-driven. They're passionate about this cause, and that's why they do what they do. I think in that sense, also, it gives them a purpose. You know, every, every human being, every person needs a sense of purpose. And the fact that something like Team Balika can give the youth of these, you know, in these villages, in these communities, can give them that sense of purpose. I mean, that's, I think, like you said, it just gives them that sense of, of achievement. Fulfillment and fulfillment. And achievement, yeah. And a lot of the Team Balikas will say, they say, you know what? I know that when that child grows up, they're going to remember me, that I would have had some impact in their life. And how many of us can say that, you know? Uh, and how many of us remember from our own childhood saying, Are, wo teacher bahut thi. Uske se to math pass ho gaya, barna to maths pass hi hota. We have seen that people have made an impact in our lives and therefore our lives have changed and, and become different. And the same way I think Team Balikas today are playing that role for you know, millions of children. I, I actually think I just last night I saw Hitchki, the film which is coming, Rani's film. That film actually talks about this a lot, although it's not just for girls. In that film, it's the girls and boys who are you know, I guess come from an underprivileged background who, who they're, you're, they're, she's speaking about in that film. But that does take up that topic and you will get that feeling, you know, when, when, you, when, when you see that. Sorry, but we'll have to take that. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, <laughs> you know me better than that. <laughs> so, uh, n yes, we do the pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, we will ha now have a photo op. So, I request all the members of the press to please come forward. We'll just remove these two chairs. Yeah? Could we just remove the two chairs? 